So it's a new day. Um, I had some family things to attend to, and I left it at the physical setup last time I left you. Um, in a previous video, we need to get power to this breaker. I'm not going to power this on just yet. Plug in everything. And because of how awkward this adapter is, unfortunately, it's going to take up some space. So I'll just go ahead and plug in everything right now. Make sure you get the click in. You should hear two clicks or one, maybe not. <laughs> um, and then this cable right here is very awkward and I can't move it to the other side, but it's just gonna sit on there just like so. We're seated in there. So now we got power to the dry cooler fan and power to this, but we do not wanna hook up the ASIC just yet. Uh, we need to fill the fluid. So obviously, bit cool BC888 dielectric coolant. And the top up here has like you got to break these tabs and once you break these tabs you can twist that off and then obviously we need to pour that into here now because there's no fluid in the system there's going to be a process to where we need to kind of fill the system so this led is going to light up or this lcd screen is going to light up and it's going to ask if you want to circulate it and it's going to have to circulate obviously air is going to be pushed through the system and we gotta keep refilling, keep refilling, keep refilling. I wanna get the liquid to about here, and then it's gonna drop down, get it back up, drop down, so on and so forth. Almost like filling a water-cooled loop on your computer. So let me get the process going and start filling this thing up. All right, definitely be careful with splashback, but we got it filled up over the threshold, a little bit under the power port. Now, from my understanding, we can power this on. I believe this fan is gonna kick on as well. Just make sure everything is snug, power is good. I got a couple pieces of paper towel to clean up just in case I need to tighten these clamps, but we're about to find out. All right, that's the fan spinning up. Ooh, that's got some suction. Look at that. That's some airflow. Paper towel got sucked in. All right, so now you can see on here, press to circulate. We need to do that. That's gonna suck the liquid in. And you can see it going down. And we need to fill it. There's a temperature, pump's working. I'm on standby. Stop it there, get my paper towel, dry up the drips. Get my paper towel, dry up the drips. Make sure nothing's dripping. Keep this paper towel away from that radiator. All right, now you can see that the liquid level is on level right now. So I'm gonna need to put something underneath here to try to keep that level. You can see it's actually, this thing is so heavy. You can see what it's doing to the dresser right now. So, obviously a metal shelf would be better. Let's see what this thing says. Press to start mining. I don't want to start mining just yet because I want to power off everything. I'm going to do that now. And this definitely, this definitely doesn't look like it's variable fan speed, but it's, it puts out some air for real. 
So we're probably going to have to figure out how to vent that somewhere or keep the garage door cracked. But a different problem for a different day. So let's kick it back on and see what the LED says. You hear the beeps. Press to circulate. Okay. It's circulating again. You can see the air bubbles coming out little by little. Temperature readout. Pumps looking good. Fans looking good. Everything is detected. Liquid. All right, so it looks like we're ready to start mining, but before we do that, again, I'm gonna level this thing out a little bit, see what I can do. So for now, because I gotta finish a couple things up, we're just gonna close the lid. Actually, let me wipe down this. You can see some splashback. As you're pouring, be very careful. You lean it too far in, it's gonna make a lot of splashes. Too far back, you're not gonna get enough. You're gonna be holding it for a long time. So I'm just gonna put the lid on for now. And then we can go ahead and connect power, ethernet, everything to that miner, and we should be good to go. But I just wanna close up everything because this is a really neat setup from Engineering Fluids. Just push that back in, tighten it down, and now I got some extra immersion liquid if needed. Give it a quick wipe and set that bad boy to the side. Now this, from my understanding, is non-toxic, non-corrosive. Um, good for your ASICs, but also like it's some spilled on my dresser. It's not going to harm it in any any particular way. I'm sure certain mater materials aren't acceptable, but for right now we're good there. I need to level it off and then we can get the ASIC hooked up to make sure that it's showing on the pool side. So it's about as good as I'm going to get it. Um, we're going to go ahead and connect everything. Again, I am waiting for the power connector that I really want, which is actually if you can help me out in the comments um i'm looking for dual i believe the c13 right to c19 and i can't find that anywhere but here we are plug that in the oil feels viscous but very fluent All right, so here we are. It's about as level as I'm gonna get it for right now. I'll do some adjustment later. This dresser isn't exactly the best, but I'm looking for a dual C13 to C19 plug. I got that plugged in now. The oil feels viscous, but very, very like, I don't know, light. I don't know how to explain that to you. Um, it does make your hands feel soft after you dry it off. Uh, if you care about that kind of stuff, but um, Gonna need to Plug everything in Ethernet cable might be a bit of a problem because this is a tall miner We'll see How this goes Let's see how can we do this Okay, so that's good now will the lid shut is the question because you could see how tall that is the lid will barely shut let's give it a light bend try not to break anything give it a light bend just so that way the lid can close completely all right there we go we're not going to lock the lid right now we're just going to leave it as is and now we're going to power everything back on, move anything loose away from this thing, because this radiator will suck the world in. Uh, I've got to turn the breaker back on. Let me do that real quick. Making sure all our connections are good. Fan powering up. Press to circulate every time you restart it. Temperature 26 degrees Celsius, pump, fan, liquid. So now we can click press to start mining. I'm gonna get my laptop ready to go before I do that. And here we are on the laptop. We got the wet miner uh, currently hashing away and mining. Uh, unfortunately, when I had to flash the custom BT miners firmware off of it, I lost a little bit of performance um, having to go back to stock and then flash it to be ready for immersion cooling, but it's okay. 
We're at our only 107, uh, you know, Terra hash at around 3,600 watts. So not the most efficient miner compared to some of the others out there. But it is hashing away. We could see the board power or each board. So we got three boards in there, as you saw in the video. Uh, these are the hash rates that we have over one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes. Um, and we can see additional information about it, you know, alive, the temperature. And look at those temperatures, 53, 54, 54. Remember um, earlier when we were on air inside my house, my air-conditioned house, you know, we were hitting uh, upwards of almost 96, 98, 100 degrees, depending on how hot the day was, midday and whatnot. So to cut the temperatures down by in half, basically, or more, um, is absolutely impressive considering this isn't going to be in a hot garage, you know, here in Florida. So definitely impressive. I am connected to, to pools and hashing away. So the physical setup of this particular device, uh, the fog hashing container and dry cooler, was actually pretty simple. It is an all-in-one solution. It's not, when I, when I say all-in-one, you know, it's, it's an AIO, kind of like a CPU cooler is an AIO, right? You got your pump, your hoses, and your radiator. Uh, but there is some assembly required, right? Um, it's not going to be a singular unit with dry cooler, pump, everything embedded. But still, it gets the job done. It is a smaller package, could definitely fit on a small shelf uh, in your garage, warehouse, or what have you. But for the bigger uh, operators and farms, you're probably going to want a bigger unit. But that is it uh, for this video. I just want to show that it's hashing away as far as performance profits all that stuff we'll cover that in a different video thank you for bearing with me as i continue to work on getting this fog hashing device set up uh, but do me a favor let me know your thoughts down in the comments below i know a lot of people will, will build custom and have built custom immersion cooling systems but uh when i was calculating everything one of my colleagues turned to me and said don't reinvent the wheel uh hence the reason why i went with fog hashing there are other alternatives out there yes uh, but fog hashing ultimately offered for what my needs are, which is a single ASIC, the better price uh, to performance ratio that I was looking for. And we'll see how things go as the market continues to move forward, whether it's in a downtrend or uptrend. You still need to cool your hardware and there are offers and opportunities out there for you. But that do me a favor. Hit the like button on the way out. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out links in the description. Um, and I will catch you in the next one. We are hashing away at the pool. And we are confirmed.